What is going on everybody? Chris Kennedy here coming at you with another college football related video and today I'm going to be talking two topics. The first one, coaching turnover at the University of Alabama. The second one being what I think Nick Saban has in store for Pete Golding's future. But before I do that, go ahead, please like and subscribe to my videos. I love talking college football. Could talk it all day, not just my team, but any team. So any type of support you could give me would be greatly appreciated. So let's go ahead and get into the first topic, and that's coaching turnover at the University of Alabama. Now, if you're a Bama fan like myself, it can be frustrating to see your offensive coordinator, your defensive coordinator, bounce whenever another program offers them a boatload of money. And I mean, from a financial standpoint and a career progression standpoint, I get it. I do. But there's a side of me that always wishes I that, that Bama could pay these guys a, a good amount of money and keep them on staff because I think that continuity would go a long way. So I tried looking at this from a different outlook. You know, Clemson has their guys and, and they are not poached like the Bama staff is. Brent Venables has been there for a while. Tony Elliott has been there for years. They just have a good group of guys and they're happy at Clemson, but that's not the case with Bama. These guys go to Bama, they have success, and then it's on to something else. So I tried to look at this and, and wondered, like, why can't Bama keep people on staff? What is the problem here? And then I started thinking, is Nick Saban actually smarter than what we give him credit for? And the answer to that question is probably yes, because he's the greatest to ever walk the sidelines. What if there is an advantage behind these coaches coming and going. Now listen to what I say before you say, all right, next video, this guy, I don't know what he's talking about. Bama brings in qualified people. They always do, especially on the offensive end of the ball. I mean, you look at Lane Kiffin, he was a great offensive mind, he came to Bama. Steve Sarkeesian, another great offensive mind. Now they're bringing in Bill O'Brien, who previous job was a head coach and GM at the Houston Texans. We know these guys don't stick around. It's not going to happen. They're going to have a little bit of success, and I believe that Bill O'Brien will probably be out of Bama in one, maybe two years, two years if we're lucky, and that's just the way it is. But look at it from a strategic standpoint if you're Bama, and I'll put myself in Ole Miss's shoes, right? So Ole Miss, they had a pretty good game against Bama last year, scored 48 points on that defense, but gave up 63 on their own defense. I mean, they, they gave up 63 points. You can't win giving up 63 points in a game. So if you're on that Ole Miss staff, you're probably breaking down Bama game film right now. And you're looking at it and you're like, man, we have to do something, but – we have no clue what Bama's offense is going to be next year. I mean, I can use this game tape as much as I can, and sure, they're going to be doing some of the same things, but they've got a brand new coordinator in place, so he's going to bring his own little wrinkle to the thing, to the game. they got a new running backs coach and Robert Gillespie, who's coming from North Carolina and had two 1,000-yard rushers, so how are they going to use the talent that we that – all know Bama has at running back, how are they going to use that? So it's you can only get so much information from these game tapes because that staff is constantly changing. And Nick Saban doesn't gamble with somebody who hasn't proven himself, with the exception of one guy, and we'll talk on him later. He brings in people who are experienced, whether it's an analyst, a skill positions coach, or a coordinator position. So it's just a different outlook, but let me know what you guys think. I mean, do you think strategically this could be a good move for Bama because you have the talent there and these guys obviously know what they're doing. And by doing this, no team is able to get a full grasp on what an Alabama offense is going to look like in 2021. That was my first point. And like I said, you guys let me know in the comments below. Now I'm going to get to my second point. And this kind of contradicts a little bit of what I said as far as bringing in experience because the guy I'm going to talk now doesn't have experience like some of the other people. And that guy is Pete Golding. 
So I think a lot of people were curious when we brought in Pete Golding and made him the defensive coordinator on how long this guy was going to stick around. I mean, he doesn't have huge ties to FBS programs. Spent some time at, I think it was Texas San Antonio, Southern Miss, uh, Delta State. I think he graduated from Delta State. So, I mean, not a big FBS school, but he comes in and he's the D coordinator. And I'll be the first to tell you, in 2019, the Bama defense was not very good. And Pete Golding caught a lot of heat. In 2020, it started off rough, especially after that Ole Miss game. And I don't think things really turned around positively until the second half of that Georgia game. A lot of people will say, well, what about the Florida game? Well, I would argue that that Florida offense, full strength with Kyle Pitts, Tony, um, Kyle Trask, those guys would have put those points up on anybody. And yes, that includes Oklahoma if all these guys wouldn't have opted out. But Pete Golding caught a lot of heat after this. And a lot of people were wondering if he's going to still have a job, especially at the time with Charlie Strong as an analyst and knowing what his defensive mind is. Here's the thing I'll say, though. Pete Golding has arguably had the roughest time as an assistant coach at the University of Alabama over anyone. His first year on the job, he loses his entire linebacking core to injury. And he coaches linebackers, so you're playing guys that even though they're talented, they don't have a lot of in-game experience. They also had a lot of injuries on the defensive line. It's no mystery. Bama went through all kinds of injuries and had all kinds of issues in 2019. Still came within eight points of going undefeated, and one of those losses included a loss to a team in LSU that we thought at the time was kind of revolutionary. And I mean, they were. They were a great team. And then 2020 comes around. Okay, we bring in David Ray and Matt Blue. And all of a sudden, we should have things figured out, but COVID hits, so you don't get spring ball. So he's never really had the opportunity to get a full spring and be fully healthy at the position. And Nick Saban has defended him in a lot of his press conferences. Here's what I'll say. I think Saban realized we need to bring a guy on staff that is not going to leave as soon as he has success and will stick around a little bit. Now, with Bill O'Brien coming in, I've heard a lot of rumors on Bill O'Brien could be the next head coach at Alabama, and maybe he is. I mean, Nick Saban's approaching 70 years old, and if I had to guess, I mean, I would put nothing past Nick Saban. He might coach till he's 90, but if I had to guess, I'd say he's probably going to be coaching uh, for another five, six years, and then somebody's going to take over. Just think about this. Why not? Let a guy take over, a young guy who has not been coaching under other programs and has his own way of doing things, only knows the way that the greatest coach to ever coach the game has done it. And and Pete Golding, I believe, is a strong possibility to be the future coach at the University of Alabama. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but listen to what I said. If you bring somebody else in, we're going to want that person to do things exactly like Nick Saban did. But that's not going to happen. If Bill O'Brien is the head coach, he knows what works for him and that's what he's going to do. And you can't teach an old old dog new tricks. So if you ask me, let's groom a guy, let's let him learn under the best, and he only knows one way of doing things and that's Saban's way. And then hopefully he can take over and kind of copycat a lot of what Nick Saban has done throughout his career. If you think about it, that's exactly what Kirby Smart did at Georgia and look where Georgia is. And I believe if Kirby would have come around a little later in his career and a little closer to Nick retiring, he would have been the next head coach at Alabama. But the truth is, is Nick just had more years of coaching left in him. So Kirby saw that Georgia job open up and realized, hey, man, I got to go. Don't overlook Pete Golding. Even though it's been frustrating, understand that he's had a rough go at it. And a lot of the reasons he's had a rough go are not his fault. But that's all I wanted to talk about today. That coaching turnover 
what you think is in Pete Golding's future. And let me know in the comments below if you think I'm absolutely crazy. And if you do, that's fine. Or if you think I have a point. I appreciate you guys listening. I'll come back with another video here shortly. And you guys take care.